Welcome to the Power Couples Rock podcast, where our mission is to build a collective community of marriages, where we encourage, inspire, and support one another in order to have masterful marriages. We're Carlos, Catherine, Chris, and Sonia. Please check us out, powercouplesrock.com, follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. We believe that one of the most amazing legacies we can leave in life is a great marriage. So we hope you'll listen, learn, and love the conversation. Let's power up. Hey now, welcome to the Power Couples Rock Podcast. My name is Chris, and I am here with my most beautiful wife, Sonia. Say hello to the people, Sonia. Hi, people. <laughs> this is voice, Sonia. Your voice is beautiful, too. Yes. Oh, you're so sweet, <laughs> honey. <laughs> it's going to be a tough topic. <laughs> and yeah. we are here with our most favorite Rich. people in, in the, the universe. universe. Carlos and, and Catherine. Catherine Green, what's Woo, up? Woo-hoo. Hey, what's up? Hey, my power brother. Power couples. Hey, power couples. Listen, uh, we've gotten a lot of feedback since uh, the last time we put out one of these podcasts, and oh, we're going to have to apologize. Why? Oh, why? Why? Because it's been why? too long. It People, has they want to hear it's more. It's been long. They, they want to hear more. more they, but we've so. gotten great feedback about people who have listen to them over and over again. And so it's important to listen to uh, things more than one time because that means you get it deep down in your soul. Right. (laughs) There you go. And for those of you who may not be totally into podcasts and aren't super familiar with how these things work or maybe the app that you're listening to your podcast in, some apps allow you to have chapters. I think um, Apple Podcasts does, I know Stitcher does, and some of the other uh, podcast applications do. So if you wanted to go back to a podcast, let's just say you wanted to go back to non-negotiables, let parents be parents, and there was something specifically there, you can look at the chapters and find it. So uh, that's something that we do as well. So if you ever want to go back to an old podcast, not old podcast, you want to go back to a podcast that we recorded months ago, you can do that and actually look in the chapters and go to where you need to go to in a particular topic. So we had a lot of stuff going on uh, between the last podcast and now, a lot of life uh, events happening with graduations and um Job weddings. changes and weddings and anniversary trips parties and anniversaries. Yes. yes. And so uh, we apologize to uh, both of our fans that, <laughs> that <laughs> both are, of them, <laughs> both of them. Um, <laughs> thanks to both of you. <laughs> I'm sorry. But in any event, we're here now, and we just enjoy being together uh, with with each other so much, and uh, we're going to do this more often, and that's what we talked about uh, before now. So, Carlos, I guess I'll roll it over to you. Um, this is this is something that um, I'm excited to to jump into, and a lot of people talk about this, and I think you've got. Um, uh, you know, an interesting way of, of looking at love and respect mm-hmm. and love as it relates to how a woman, how a wife wants to be loved and respect and how that relates to a husband mm-hmm. in, in the marriage. So I'll roll it over to you and, and uh, we'll, we'll talk about, uh, you know, the basis for the scripture basis and, and everything else for this. I love it. And I'm, we're sitting here, right? Chris has got his arms folded. He's <laughs> jacked back in his seat. He's got his lion's cap on. He's like, Carlos, handle it. Handle your business. 
I just but, ran out of words. Just, I'm like, uh, we know who's I, really in control here. Really in control. That would be Carlos. No, no. But I, I, I love this topic. Catherine and I do a lot of coaching with couples. And as we are coaching them, we do find that there are challenges with love and respect. And we have to figure out and help them realize what a man really is looking for versus what a woman is really yearning for and what she's designed for. And so when we were looking at putting this together, we thought the classic scripture that we always look at, right, is in Ephesians 5. And we look at it, Ephesians 5, verses 31 through 33. And it says, For this cause a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. 32. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence or respects her husband. Mm. So this is Paul actually speaking to the Ephesians church. Yeah. And he's given instruction regarding relationships, especially from a husband and wife perspective and what that looks like. And if we follow those basic techniques of love and respect, that increases the opportunity for us to have a master for marriage. So I would love for us to kind of take a look at from a woman's perspective, love. She yearns for love. She is a nurturer by design. She that's where the kids run to. That's where they're loved on. And if anything happens, that she gives her heart that way. But she also is looking for love as well. And so I would love to hear from our beautiful ladies, my beautiful wife, Catherine, Sonia, my beautiful sister here. What are you all looking for when it says, I just want to be loved? What does that mean? Define that. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> why are you why are you <laughs> laughing? Chris? You're like, whoa. That was a perfect setup. Perfect. <laughs> Define it. Yes. And then we'll move to what we look for, Chris and I, as men mm-hmm. when it comes to respect. Okay. Well, I have to go back to my childhood to first understand how I experience love. Mm. And from that, when I was taught and experience is something that I know that I could carry on. So my experience of love was, you know, my father um, spending time with me, listening to my heart breaks, (laughs) listening Mm. to my struggles, um, and my mom being there as a nurturer to hold and to caress me and to, you know, calm me when uh, I wasn't feeling in my greatest in all of those um, caretaking experiences that I had in my early childhood helped me really to understand what love was. That's one part. And the other part is um, my parents early on took me to church. And so I began to understand what God's love was and so how he loved us despite of all of the things that we may do in our lives he still loves us unconditionally Mm -hmm. and it took me a while to understand what unconditionally meant but as I got older I began to those things begin to transfer when I begin to have relationships on my own so love for me looks like um, you uh, listening to me you caring for me, you're being present for me, you touching, caressing. Um, those are some of the touching it, and caressing. Yes, I can do that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean that's that's the first thing a man thinks about no. when he's thinking about loving his wife, I can right? Do that. So it's chat. Not- Check for Check. It's not always <laughs> external, me. but it's internal, like hearing, being very attentive mm. to me. So mm. I could go on, but I'll let Sonya jump in. And then if something else comes to mind, I'll jump in. Well, it's interesting that you go back to your childhood to kind of get these ideas about what love and respect 
mean to you? And for me, I grew up in the church, but my mom was the oldest of 12 kids. And so she was pretty much the one in her family as a sibling to her kids, to her um, brothers and sisters that was in control. So she was a very much in control kind of person. And she's still like that. She was like that growing up for me. Um, And my dad was a lot more of the provider. Um, My mom was a provider too, but he went to work and made sure the things around the house were, were fixed. But there wasn't a real, I guess, um, open communication kind of relationship between me and my dad. He was my dad and he was strong and he was the disciplinarian, Mm. but he didn't provide any of that listening, talking when things got really rough. Mm. So I find myself being a lot like my mom, being the oldest of three kids myself, being in charge and I find myself um, doing that a lot in our marriage. So for me, love looks like helping out, um, kind of being there. Uh, I think things are a little bit, I don't, well, I don't think they're different. I think we all, all women desire that. But, you know, physical touch is not one of my love languages. Mm-hmm. So for me, that doesn't, in, that doesn't mean love to me. Mm. It's it's more of the helping around the house and, and just kind of being there and being involved mm-hmm. and listening and trying to understand, mm-hmm. I think for me is what, what love says. Mm-hmm. But I think our childhood does um, dictate a lot about how we view that relationship and kind of what we bring to it. Mm. Yes. I, I love, you're going to say something, Catherine? No, go ahead. I, I love that because in the scripture it says that this is a great mystery. And I know that Paul is speaking about Christ and the church and mm-hmm. that relationship there. But as you all were describing love, Chris and I are sitting here taking notes on mm-hmm. what that looks like. And I think one of the first things that we do to unlock the mystery is to listen and learn. Mm-hmm. That's right. And both of you all described define love differently Mm -hmm. because of your history, your past, your experiences with your families. So the way that I love Catherine will be different than the way Chris would love you, Sonya. 100%. Mm -hmm. Which is, it's fine to do that, but I have to be in tune with the way that I love my wife Mm -hmm. and take all of that into consideration to say that is love to her. And so for me, I was, it takes a selfless person to take a look at their spouse, their wife, and says, this is how she's going to best be loved Mm -hmm. because Mm -hmm. of her experiences, her background, and just her DNA, Mm -hmm. what makes, makes up her. And I think oftentimes I may not be as conscious as I need to in sensitive situations with Catherine Mm. to make sure that I'm loving her the right way Mm. that would best protect her because Catherine is a, she's a very strong woman externally. She's extremely smart, gifted, and can handle a lot of things on her plate. She has very high capacity. So I'm thinking she can handle it, but really underneath that exterior, there's just a really tenderness Mm -hmm. that I need to really minister to. And she just told me what that looked like especially because her dad gave her that Mm -hmm. and that's what her expectation is. So I want to make sure that I continue to feed that expectation appropriately. Makes sense. Do you guys feel like it's, it's paramount importance for married couples to have this conversation and for it, for a, for a husband to say to a wife, what does love Mm -hmm. from me look like to you? Mm -hmm. And like, you know, we, we, you kind of put Catherine and Sonia on the spot here, mm-hmm. but some of what they said, I mean, I've, I've known and I've sort of heard it, but it's, it's good to hear. That's why I'm writing this. Down, I know. Right? Me right? too. They're cheat codes. <laughs> yes, right? Exactly. <laughs> and, and so it, it's, it's important. And again, we keep on going back to being intentional. We keep on going back and, and not putting your marriage on autopilot and not putting it on cruise control and saying, hey, what, what 
does love look like mm-hmm. to you? And have these kinds of conversations and listen to what they have to say. And I, and I think a lot of what both Catherine and Sonia have said is not just listening, um, but, but really at the core of it is as it, me as a husband, I need to be selfless. I need to look at Sonia and say, how can I love her? How, what, and, and what does she, uh, how does she see love mm-hmm. from me? So that, that, you know, I've got these cheat codes. I mean, you know, in, in being a guy and, and being me, I've got to put things into boxes. I've got to plan this. I've got to, you know, I've got to do that. I, I love her, but I'm not always hunting, you know, 100% of my time. I'm not thinking about loving her. Mm-hmm. Okay. Correct. So I've got to, I've got to do that. I've got to start doing that because that's important. It's, it's important so important. To be intentional <laughs> in doing that. And, the, you know, the, it's about, you know, Sonia mentioned being present, thinking about her. This is all, you know, you've got to identify these things. She talked about helping out, and I, I'm, I'm not going to name um, <laughs> these people, but uh, this reminds oh. me of a, uh, uh, something that came out of our community group meeting one time, and we were, and I won't name who this, <laughs> who this couple is, but the, uh, the woman and the wife uh, they were talking, we were talking about, you know, physical and, and love and, and these, these kinds of things in, in, within the marriage context. And she said, you know, sometimes the best foreplay is when I know he's cleaned the house. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's and, good. And so, that, you know, so that's her love. Helping out, you know, and it's not just, it's doing things. Sonia likes t- to have me do things without her telling me that they need to be done. It's helping out. It's like, oh, you decided you were going to go get Max from this, or you just decided, oh, you cleaned this. Oh, you, those are the kind, she feels love when that mm-hmm. happens. Mm-hmm. So I've got to listen to that. I've got to be more intentional in that Where, respect. You're also describing, I think, crisis character. Christ Mm -hmm. always thought about what he can do for others and how he could build others up. Mm. And so it was always an outward looking, how do I actually help you to become the best person you can be? And that's where we are as husbands. It's like, how do I make my wife better because she's with me, Mm -hmm. because she's devoted herself to me? What does that look like? Mm -hmm. And so Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to take on the mindset of Christ. And loving my wife, because that's the only way I'm going to truly be able to do that, because then the Holy Spirit will let me know I'm not serving her well. I'm not loving her well. So how do I hone in on what's happening with her from a sensitivity standpoint Mm -hmm. to make sure that I can feel that need for her at that time? Mm -hmm. Because it can change. uh, Yeah, it can change. Um for better Mm -hmm. but Chris had asked should you be having discussions around this and absolutely you should have discussions about we talk about everything but the things that's going to matter that in our lives to keep us together for to the end of time when you know we both are gone home the Mm -hmm. glory but so those are act actual conversation should that should take place because when we first got together carlos and i it was more of an infatuation first kind of love you know it's not excited oh, yeah. you know it's like are we gonna be in a committed relationship and you know just your heart <laughs> flutters i don't know about his fluttering but mine was fluttering after i got to know him a little more. <laughs> But <laughs> yes, it wasn't it didn't flutter at first. No, it did. It didn't oh, even flutch. It, no, it, it didn't even flutch. <laughs> <laughs> but he was a great friend. Let's mm. say that. And friend zone. Mm. <laughs> Move out of that. But so it was. But then once we made a commitment relationship, it's just like you're just so giddy and just excited. Yeah. But as you have life experiences. It's more of a, we call it a more mature love. Mm-hmm. We grow because the things that we used to do, we don't do, or we just 
you know, it's not because people say they fall out of love. It's not that we just say we met, our love is mature because mm. I really am not the exact same person right. I was when mm-hmm. I first met him. Yep. Mm-hmm. And I am better. And it is because he's helped to make me better. Mm-hmm. I've played a role in making myself better. I don't just totally make it dependent upon him. But it's also I have to do some input into myself. And that should be another topic later on, (laughs) self-care. Absolutely. Do you think that's part of the the mystery that was in the verse there? And that is continuing to work through this. And as your spouse changes and you're challenged in that, you keep working at it. It's a a constant pursuit Mm, in that relationship because seasons change. Family dynamics change. Everything changes. Everything can change. Mm-hmm. And so understanding or how does she respond to those changes so that you can be the best person that she needs to help her transition in those spaces. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I love that. And you were talking about um, uh, that you should have self-care. But I was also thinking the one of the other ways that I can study, and I forgot who wrote this, but on the love languages. Um, oh, Gary Chapman. Gary Chapman, Chapman right. Mm-hmm. So I understood that Catherine's love language is quality time. Mm-hmm. So that's another way that I can love on her because she loves self-care that she mentions. She also loves to just spend time with girlfriends. Mm-hmm. And then she likes to spend time with just me. So creating those different opportunities for her so that she can be cared for and loved for well really helps her to be a better person. Mm -hmm. But you've got to understand that love language and then build a strategy. My business mind coming out now. Build a strategy around that so that on a consistent basis, she's being ministered to Mm -hmm. from a quality standpoint. That's kind of what I'm talking. You you, you said it better than I did in terms of like a strategy. For me, it's like I got to put everything in a box. Like it's got to (laughs) be, you know, know, in in order for me to make sure that I can do it. Mm -hmm. Because... Honestly, I'm sometimes I'm just not smart about it. Yeah. Or if, well, I'm not or either. I'm not perfect it, you know? at so all by to, any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, just like I would a like would work, you know, at a job, and I need okay, I've got to sit down and I've got to create a presentation, and I've got to pull, you know, and and so I you you plan that out. Like, why are why am I not planning out how I should be loving my wife? Yes. It seems kind of weird to to do that, but why not? But I think what what you're doing, though, is being intentional, Mm -hmm. even when you're planning it out or thinking Mm -hmm. about it. There's an intentionality about that because you want to love your Mm -hmm. wife and want to love her well. Mm -hmm. And we talked about, you know, growing up and what it was like. Quality time has always been a part of who I who I was as a child, too, because my father, uh, my family, every Friday would get together and do a fish fry. Now, whether we fried it at home <laughs> or we went to Captain D's or the oh, nearest yeah. fish house, it was fish fried. We used to have fish, fish fries at the Methodist church. Really? Right? On we Friday just had some good fish. My dad just caught some fresh catfish Ooh. and we had fresh Ooh. fried fat catfish yes. last time we were there. You so. almost said fat fish. I did. I did. Fat, fat fish. fish. Fat, fresh fish. Catfish. <laughs> <laughs> but you were but I was talking about quality time. That meant a lot. My dad exemplified that mm-hmm. early on, and that became a part of who I, who I was, who I am now. Mm-hmm. And so I, I expect that too. What Carlos? He knows that you know. Love, the five love languages brought it more to life. Mm-hmm. You know. Oh yeah, that's that's why I need that. But I desire that. Um, And so not only that, to this day, my dad and his family, they get together every Sunday. Mm -hmm. We did that growing up. They still do it. Mm -hmm. So I know where to find them if I come in town on a Sunday (laughs) Sunday afternoon. (laughs) They're going to be over there with family. Family and friends meant a lot in that Mm -hmm. quality time spending together. And so that I cherish that. I have a question for you, Carlos, as I'm sitting here listening to you talk, um, because I know guys desire respect. Women mostly need the love of their Mm -hmm. husbands. So as you're sitting here talking about your strategy for loving Catherine, there might be someone out there that's thinking, okay, is the strategy the same from Catherine to you? Mm -hmm. 
Is it the same? Do you think? For her respecting me? Like, her, is her strategy exactly like you? She, should she be strategizing about how to love you? Or should her strategy be based on how I respect? How re, how does she does re- that make respect? sense? Yeah, it does. Because I think we're called to do different things. It is. That's it why is. I'm asking. Because mm-hmm. some people may say, well, do I need to do exactly what you're doing for my husband? But I think we're requiring two different we require two different things. Right. So what does that look like? Because if we, if you go back to that from scripture a wife. there, I love that. Ephesians 5, uh, 33, you go back to that scripture. It says, nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverences or respects Specs. her husband. Right. So there's not an edict that the wife would love her husband, but that she would respect her husband which is a form of love for the man. Right. Mm-hmm. right. So it would be different, but the intentionality would still be would there. Still be the the same. strategy yeah. would be there. And I love, I, I really love this because I wanted to actually even talk through this, if, if you don't mind. No, go ahead. When it says, particularly so love his wife, even as himself. So if, if I loved myself well, then I'm not going to curse myself out. I'm not going to call myself out of my name. I'm not going to make myself look bad in front of other people. So why would I do my spouse that way? Why would I do my wife that way? Mm-hmm. If I like to be well taken care of, then why would I not take care of my wife the mm-hmm. way that I would love to be taken mm-hmm. care of? Again, that's that selfless act yep. that Christ puts out there on how we are, are to love our spouses, You know what really grinds me is sometimes I'll talk to other guys who are married and they'll just say really not, not like uh, evil things about their wives, but somewhat disrespectful things about mm-hmm. their wives. And mm-hmm. I just, you know, and it may be just, maybe they're, it's almost like this guy code, like, man, my wife, she's, you know, the old ball and chain. She's making me do this, that, or the other. Man, you got to get that out. Get really that do. out of your, yeah, I mean, there is, there, that, that is just not, I mean, if other guys, you're hanging out with other guys that are, that are saying the same kind of stuff, it's deconstructive. Right? It is. It's not respectful. Mm-hmm. It's not respectful, and the, you're not following what the scripture would say mm-hmm. that you would do. And then plus when you have that, la- that language or that conversation, that's, that's really an issue that you're having with yourself. Mm-hmm. It, you're throwing in on your wife, but it's an issue that you're having with yourself. Mm-hmm. There's a commitment issue that may be, that you may be struggling with. There may be a pride issue. There may be a, I got to look good in front of my boys issue that I'm the tough man, mm-hmm. but really you're having the issue with yourself that you haven't released yourself to be transparent in how to love yourself and love your wife and making sure that you all are presented as one flesh. Cause that's mm-hmm. what the scripture says. Mm-hmm. And I that. have to, it goes again back to my childhood. I learned respect <laughs> early on. I love it. I really did. Mm-hmm. And, um, but that was, I'm not gonna say everybody had that opportunity, right. mm-hmm. but at least I know that's why I learned it early on and then that carried on throughout my you know childhood through my adulthood and then you get to as you get older you have to understand what that looks like right and how we in our marriage Carlos we can constantly want each other to be better mm-hmm. um, look look better mm-hmm. physically <laughs> physically better. mentally spiritually and emotionally yes. what does that look like and so i have to do my due diligence in understanding what respect looks like for yeah. my husband mm-hmm. and so once i understand it and get clarity on it then i know how and what i need to do to respect him mm-hmm. i mean i have my upbringing i have the word of god and i have my life experiences mm-hmm. That will help me ultimately get to what I need to do and how I need to respect him. I, I, sometimes it gets very challenging to know how to love you, your a wife, sometimes because of the situations that come. And so for me, it takes me, I, I have to go into like this prayer and ask for wisdom and guidance from the Holy Spirit to lead me because 
depending on the situation and the season, you know, if there are parental medical issues that are very sensitive and she's feeling down about that, where sometimes I just need to be quiet and allow her to process through that. And that's a good way to love her. Other times I need to be sensitive when she's a little bit overwhelmed or she's, she's not at her best. So how do I actually fill in those gaps for her? Because she's got so much on her mind or on her plate Mm -hmm. that this is the best way to love her at this time. So constantly asking the Holy Spirit to give me what I need so that mm-hmm. I can give it to her. Right. And, and I'm the, the whole time, Go I'm sorry, the whole time yeah. you're listening to yes. what she's saying, mm-hmm. right? Yes. And, you're, um, and I, I think that's something I've got to, personally, I've got to do better at with Sonia is, is, is listening and not being that, uh, the guy that wants to fix everything all the time. Mm-hmm. There's, you know, that's my innate thing is she's feeling this way how do I stop her from feeling this way and it may just be a situation where I've just got to let her vent I've got to Mm -hmm. let her talk I've got her and I need to listen right Mm -hmm. and I'm getting a look right now (laughs) do you see that look yes you that are listening to the podcast are not seeing that look oh they could see it they could feel it (laughs) they felt it it's coming through the microphone I cut I cut you off no no I (laughs) I don't even remember what I was going to say, but I can come up with something. But no, no, I, no I, but I, I, I did want to say. Go no, ahead. I wanted to say um, that. See, now I forgot. You can go ahead. That's okay. <laughs> Chris, you had said earlier about it's all about listening mm-hmm. and being selfless regarding what that looks like. And you should be talking about how to love your wife better. So I remember a couple of conversations that Catherine and I had. We even talked about how to, how I should be loving her even intimately, you know, through Mm lovemaking. What does that look like? What what makes you feel good? And what are you like? No, we're not doing that. (laughs) Exactly. We're not going there. So even if I tried to go there, I know it's completely like, she's not going to do that. So why would I force that? But if I have a conversation with her and know what she feels comfortable with, then we can enhance that and make that where, because it's all about serving her. Mm -hmm. I know it's like the man's like, you know, I need to get mine on, but it's (sighs) really about lovemaking. It's about satisfying the other person. And -hmm. that comes in many different forms. But if I didn't know how to do that, then we could have terrible lovemaking or terrible sex. But right now, mm-hmm. I know what makes her tick just because we've had conversations yes. about that. And people don't talk about it. No. They just go through the motion. Correct. I, I know several people just go through the motion and just they're just satisfying themselves. And really, it should be we should be OK to talk about yes. what you like, the way you like to be held, the way you like to be caressed, the what you what don't touch me there. Put, yes. Okay. It's normal conversation. We're going to get into it right now, and this podcast has all of a sudden become explicit. <laughs> Here we go. Well, that will be another podcast yes. that we can talk about. But again, it's well, about conversation. Yes. We, said, um, we said in order to learn how to love, you got to still have conversation about it. You do. You got to, in order to respect, you got to have a conversation about it. And just more dialogue. These things are so important. There was one thing I was going to say and every time i get ready to think about it <laughs> say it, <laughs> i go to another space do you have something well, yeah. <laughs> i do have a couple of things and as we're talking about this there's two things that kind of come to my mind number one we don't do a very good job of just having dialogue outside of something that's come up with frustration i think mm. we tend to confront it find issues and then once we have an issue well that's a topic we need to talk about but then we never talk about it Mm. so i do think dialogue beforehand is so important Mm -hmm. and then another thing that i just found in um, a magazine that i'm reading is that it says true fulfillment in marriage or any other environment only comes after we find satisfaction in jesus Mm. So as I'm listening to you talk about this, I think until our own 
beings are where we should be spiritually and focused on what our spiritual goals need to be as mm. it relates to marriage. It's never truly going to play out yes. in marriage the way it's supposed to. I often wonder, because I love what you just said there, because I often wonder if we're talking intimacy and we're even talking about just our relationships, how much are we leaving on the table because we don't understand how to love spiritually? Everything Tons. is physical, mm -hmm. physical transactions or whatever, or just earthly view. But then Christ said he came to give us life and give it more abundantly. And that's in every area. So how much are couples leaving on the table to have a truly masterful marriage that just goes to a 10 at every level? And I think that comes with a spirit. Yes. Start spiritually. I think. Yes. Mm -hmm. And if it's individually, if it's important, it, it, well, we know it's important. So we just have to have the, the conversation. We'll have to have the right time to this, that, uh, this, like, let's just have dialogue about it because we mm. know we need it. Yep. We oftentimes wait till crisis. Yep. Oh, and oh if oh, yeah. we can be yes. preventative, these things can help when we get to the crisis mode. Absolutely. And so that's what we try to do. I was going to say about oh, language. Like our language, and I think we're going to talk about respect a little bit more in detail yes. later on because we didn't get a lot of that. But uh, I've heard people just down their husbands and talk about just them in a terrible way. And to me, that language is not honor and respect for that person. That's so right. it's important that we watch the way we talk about our spouses. Even if we're frustrated, there, there's still a way that you can talk to your lady friends about, you know, this frustrates me instead of, you know, calling names mm -hmm. or just putting labels on them that um, if, that if, it, that doesn't it doesn't heal the relationship. It does not help the relationship. And so it can only just taint uh, what your friends can think about. Well, it becomes you know, the dialogue saying. that you continually hear Having. if that's what you're speaking. Mm -hmm. That's what you so, believe is what you're That's become the saying. story, so, the narrative. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So. All right. So that is part one, which is love. And if you're feeling feisty and you want to listen to the respect portion of uh, the podcast, go over to the next one. Let it play. We're going to roll out at this point, and hopefully uh, you'll, uh, you'll listen to the respect. I love it. Looking forward to it. Looking Let's forward power to it. up. Power, power up, up, people. Thanks for listening to the Power Couples Rock podcast. We hope that you've been encouraged, inspired, and supported. Please listen and subscribe to our other Power Pods as we are confident that they will strengthen your marriage. Also, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and Instagram. It's there where we can extend these discussions together, take these conversations and your marriage to the next level. Enjoy your day and power up.